What is up, everybody? Calvin Bowie, a.k.a. Captain Charisma. I'm with my boy. This is what you say your name. Kaiser <laughs> Kaiser, how often do you get a chance to be on YouTube? Not very often. Do you know what YouTube is? You can be honest. YouTube. Is it something like fallopian tube? Close. No, okay. And if you put the word porn at the end, you get okay. to a different website. Okay. okay. Right. <laughs> but we are here in Houston, okay. in the, if I get this right, the Hillcroft area. Okay. Now, what is the Hillcroft area for those who've never been here? Hillcroft myself. area is also called the Gandhi district, where all the Indian and Pakistani businesses thrive and flourish because of all the, 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 the all the patrons that come to uh, support the business. There's so much food here. Yes, okay. continue on. We, have, we, j just, we just brought you some chapli kebabs. Chapli kebabs. Chapli kebabs. These are from the northwest frontier province of, of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. This is garlic naan, butter, butter naan, naan, samosas, chicken samosas, mm -hmm. Himalaya fried chicken, a wedding korma Delhi style, tandoori charga, which is specialty of Lahore, mm -hmm. and then the steak tikka, which is my take on the on the steak, uh, prepared American style but marinated with Indian spices. Now look at lo a lot of your at your menu. And I see a lot of elevated classics. You take flavors that are regional. Yes. You take ingredients that you know you grew up with, mm -hmm. and then you apply them to items like the tikka steak, which, by the way, I've never seen before. You take the tikka spices. Yes. Usually they hear a tikka, they think of tikka masala, they think of something that's really, uh, you know, curry based, something that's very. You know, you pour over yeah. uh, rice. Tikka, tikka by itself, tikka, the word tikka means a piece. A piece. Piece. Tikka. This is steak tikka means a piece of meat, mm. which is which is grilled, uh, with and marinated, and we don't sell it unless it's marinated for seventy two hours. Any any oh. meat item that you see that you uh, that you eat in the restaurant, it's at least three days in marination. And that's be it the chicken tandoori, mm -hmm. be it the steak tikka, or chicken boti kebab, all of these are marinated for 72 hours. And when you sell out, you sell out. There is sell no out, out. cutting the time by four hours or eight hours. It has to be 72 hours. Yeah. And, and I tell my workers also, and some of them hate me for this because uh, I said there are no shortcuts in Indian, Indian Pakistani cooking. In fact, for any any cuisine of the world that wants to provide good food, there are no shortcuts. The only shortcut is when you use the freeway. <laughs> the toll roads? Yeah. <laughs> or the toll road. That's the only shortcut you have. All right. How would you describe your style cuisine? As a chef for 30, 40 years. Yeah. Um, you're making me sound too old, but that's okay. <laughs> I am what I am. Um, this cuisine is the best of the best of India and Pakistan. Mm. And it is, uh, many of my dishes are, have been inspired by uh, the food from Mexico, uh, like the, the paratha dia, mm -hmm. which is my take on the, on the quesadilla. Mm -hmm. We call it paratha dia because the, the, the bread that we roll it into, instead of a tortilla, we roll it into a paratha. Mm -hmm. That's what I call a paratha dia. So the paratha dia is one. The chicken hara masala is very similar to a chicken that is uh, topped with salsa verde. Mm -hmm. It's a green curry chicken. That's one of our iconic dishes of the restaurant. The korma is classic korma. It takes four hours to make. It has ginger, garlic, onions. The holy trinity of Indian food. Yes. Yogurt. Uh, almonds, cashews, and a bunch of, of, of spices, the garam masala, mm -hmm. that makes it, this is a classic served at all Indian Pakistani mm -hmm. weddings. Yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> now for me, korma is great because it has a really nice nuttiness to it. Yes. Instead of having a sauce that's thickened with cream, they use nuts grounded up to get that nice consistency. If you have a nut allergy, please tell Kaiser ahead of time because that is something that is absolutely delicious. 
any 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 chef who uses cream in their korma his nuts should be should also be ground up <laughs> <laughs> that is very good um i asked you this earlier in 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 private but you know as a chef at this point in your career what really drives you what gets you out of bed every day what what really makes you say hey i'm going to go put in those 70 hours yet again this week 70 you stand corrected young man it's 96 hours 96 hours a week 16 hours six days a week i am way behind schedule because i am yes sir. i am behind yes, we have two restaurants and i put in 10 to 12 hours per day you're lucky i am lucky now am here lucky. comes the here comes the biryani Oh, the bir biryani it's is steaming. Our, yeah, biryani is our signature item. This is, and then this is the the vegetarian version of the chicken haram masala with paneer in it, the Indian style cheese, which is slightly uh, sauteed. And that's homemade, of course. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is this all the dishes? Everything that you see is made here. Okay, good. I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to ask you to describe each dish once again, if you don't mind. I really want the audience to see. Okay what the food looks like and understand from your lens from your appeal why why do you make the food this way microphones here i'll turn the camera on i'm going to start off with over here and i'm going to move this way okay all right good thank god i don't edit one two three i have to count okay you ready yes sir okay first dish my friend the steak tikka yes please steak tikka is is my own creation, mm -hmm. of course. Inspired by the uh, carne asada, something like that, or something close to the fajita or the carne asada. Mm -hmm. But it has its own natural flavors, of course, by using a blend of garam masala that I I came up with, mm -hmm. and it's marinated for three days in the spices. In the spices. And, and and this is a secret, so don't tell everybody. But it's it's a, there's a hint of pineapple juice in it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. The next. But you don't, you're not supposed to tell this to anyone. No okay. one will All ever right. know. The six okay. people who are watching right now would okay. never know this. Okay. So this is charga, which is uh, Lahori style chicken. And Lahori is based from, in the from south. From Lahore, Pakistan. Is that the South Pakistan? It's north of Karachi, that's no. all I know. Okay. <laughs> and now what makes it Lahore? What makes this dish? Typical Punjabi dish, mm -hmm. typical Punjabi dish, marinated in ginger, garlic, yogurt, and garam masala. Now garam masala means a combination of spices, and it, can, it is garam masala can be different for every dish that you make. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's their own, it has its own code of, of or blend of spices. Mm -hmm. This uh, tandoori chicken is moist, juicy, and flavored to the bone. That's why you marinate it for so long. You want those flavors to get down to the nitty gritty. Yes. So every bite should be the same flavor. Every bite should have that flavor riding through Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Beautiful. This is Himalaya fried chicken. Himalaya fried chicken. Yeah. And thanks to my friend Eric Sandler, mm -hmm. um, journalist, who said, why don't you come up with a fried chicken uh, recipe? And I said, okay, your wish is my command. We, we played around with the recipe for a long time. The difference between this and the southern fried chicken is that it's without skin. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. There is no skin in it, but you won't miss the skin. It's crispy, it's light, it's marinated in uh, spices, spices and herbs and, yes. and buttermilk. Which is brings that richness and, and the moisture, moisture into it. And then the, again, southern fried chicken is It is dredged. fried, yeah, it's dressed in flour yeah. and fried the southern way. Yeah. It does not have any lard. Mm -hmm. It is not because we have Muslims and we have Jewish customers, we don't put any lard into it. It is purely, it is purely cooked in 100% vegetable oil. And after, believe it or not, and you can come and check my kitchen anytime. After frying two 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 chickens, mm -hmm. we threw away the oil. That's why some people say, why is it 
twenty dollars for one fried chicken. The reason is, after every two chicken, we throw away, we discard the oil. Kaiser, it's forty dollars for a box of oil yes, right now. Yes, yes. For so it's it's basically, you know, people think that it's very, you know, at twenty dollars you get eight pieces of a whole bird, which is about three and a half pound chicken that we use. Uh, but the reason why this is priced that way is because after every two, two price, chickens, yeah. every after frying two chickens, mm -hmm. we discard the oil. Amazing. We, we Amazing. don't clean the oil with any any chemical. We just discard it. Amazing. Case closed. Case closed. Okay. So the this korma. Is oh, the korma. Korma is a classic curry. It can be chicken, lamb, or beef. What do we have here? Which is this is chicken. Uh, which is served in, in uh, Indian and Pakistani weddings, Muslim weddings. And in Hindu weddings, it's a, it's a vegetable korma. Mm -hmm. Korma is a very extensive curry. It's a very elaborate way of making it with onions, ginger, garlic, yogurt, almonds, almonds cashews, and a, and a host of garam masala. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it takes a long time because it's made in different layers, and then it's finished off with, with more garam masala at the, at the end. This it, is gonna be an explosive. It's very very in delicious dish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we don't we don't take any shortcuts making it. It takes four hours. It takes four hours. Mm. If it if the recipe calls for more, we will do it the way it is. We don't compromise on quality and on taste and on heat like some people will come and say well we, we want two dishes but one we want one of them not spicy I cannot do it that way right. because the food is already prepared correct 19 almost hundred percent of all restaurants in town will prepare or in America they prepare food by making sauces and having the meats ready already cooked making when the order comes out they'll put more chilies or less chilies and that's how they they, they they finish it off in the frying pan sure. that's not how it's made I agree that's not how it's cooked that's now it's a, not how it's supposed to be cooked it's supposed to be cooked from scratch without compromising the the steps that, yeah the steps that we take to prepare this and that that gives you a final product to really relish and and uh, Enjoy. Kaiser, you are my spirit animal. <laughs> thank you. Thank okay, you. next yeah. dish. This is the, the this, this vibrant dish here. Okay. This is chicken haram masala. At my old restaurant, I used to make this chicken haram masala. I made it four, five times, and I was newly married at the time, about 20 years ago. And my wife said, eh, it's not... It's not near as good as your other dishes. You need to do something to it. So I said, okay. Then I did it four or five times till I came up with this particular recipe. And I have only Azra, my wife, to be thankful to because she inspired me. She tightened the bolts on me. She said, make it where it's the best dish you can ever prepare. And it came out with the grace of God, thank you, that it came out this way. Is that pepperoncini? Pepperoncini, yes, yes, pepperoncini. yes. Yeah, but it's just a garnish. Okay. It has nothing to do with the flavor. flavor. Okay. Because it just looks good. It does. Uh, a real hot chili will 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 make some phone calls in the next next morning. You know, <laughs> saying, "Chef, my my behind is burning." Or my something. booty hole. Yeah. My booty but hole. But I I don't do that. That's why we put a pepperoncini. Okay. Um, and then the this green again. curry is made in three different layers. Yes. Three different sauces are, are made, mm -hmm. and then they're, they're combined together to make one, one dish. People, close, very close, uh, people who are close to my wife, the lady who does her eyebrows, eyebrows and nails, they've befriended her to find out the recipe. Uh, they have approached other, they've sent, they've sent other, their own workers to come and find out. <laughs> and they have done different things to get the recipe. I will give the recipe the day I retire or the day I, before I kick the bucket, I will give the recipe to the world. That's beautiful. Okay. That's beautiful. But till then, this is my bread and butter. I will not give the recipe out till I'm good and ready for it. I can't wait to dive into it. Let's go to the biryani next. Biryani. Biryani is, is 
a version of 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 the uh, Spanish paella. Paella is made with seafood. This is made with meat, mm -hmm. chicken, or any uh, ch chicken, lamb, beef, goat. Mm -hmm. Where meat is cooked in a in a in a thick sauce, and then layered with parboiled rice, and then steamed or baked in an oven or on the stove stove top at a flame which is a little bit more than the pilot flame mm. and then when the meat uh, is when the rice is cooked with the with the steam of the of all the, the meat curry mm -hmm. it goes into the rice it, it gives you a rich richness it gives you a very flavorful rice we use the best quality rice the most expensive rice on the market now this is a basmati rice this is not a jasmine yeah, rice yeah. This, this is, is not, not a, a, this a is basmati rice. rice but this is called this is extra long grain basmati rice oh? we have we have basmati rice and then we have extra long grain basmati rice mm -hmm. this is extra long grain basmati rice and the color it comes from saffron saffron um, it has again ginger garlic onions tomatoes and a uh, bunch of garam masala oh. and fried onions that go into it, into the making of it so this should be very aromatic it is very aromatic it's full of flavor very fulfilling one dish and you're in heaven okay two more dishes to talk about and then i start eating <laughs> chapli kebab they are they are named because of the shape of the chapel or the slippers mm. sandals mm -hmm. so they are in in pakistan they are like huge long in the shape of uh, of the sole of the sandal mm -hmm. Their main flavoring agent is toasted cumin mm -hmm. and pomegranate seeds. Pomegranate seeds, it I've gives had... You, yeah, it gives that tartness to oh, it. Oh, there's a tartness to it, so it's yeah. warm and tart. Yeah. Is this considered a snack for young children? Is this a it main can dish? Be, it can be anything you want it to be. It can be a, a dinner item, it can be a lunch item in a, in, rolled in a naan, mm -hmm. or it can be a breakfast item with a fried egg on top. Mm. Whichever you want, this is versatile. Uh, I have yet to talk about my Hunter's Beef. Hunter's Beef is, we are the only restaurant in town or in America, rather, that serves Pakistani style pastrami, which is, which is called Hunter's Beef. I will bring that to you in a little bit. Thank you. And Hunter's Beef is delectable. And that is one item that is marinated in a in a brine for 11 days mm. and after 11 days it's steamed and then baked and it's delicious i love the way you think about food i love the way you look at flavors and textures okay. i will not stand up to take a bow so that you, you can <laughs> see my waistline but you know enjoy I, enjoy the food i will i will we the, cook the, from the, the heart the samosas yeah these are crispy chicken samosas mm. we also have lamb samosas mm. and it's a great uh, way to start the meal. A meal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, garlic or naan, a snack. Butter, lo butter naan. Garlic there is naan, so naan. much food here. We are about to eat. And when I say we, I mean me and my stomach. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy it. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate that. All right. So this is this is this is one one kind of garam masala, which has whole cumin's whole cumin seeds, bay leaves, which is tej patta, cinnamon, which is uh, dalcini, long, which is cloves, green cardamom, black cardamom, sabzi lychee, kali lychee. You know, anyone who thinks, any chef who thinks he's hot shit, is not hot shit it's the masalas that the use of the masalas that makes him good or bad it's it's this is what makes your food great so you have to romance these you have to work with them you have to you have to know which one to put at what time and for how long you have to roast it for how long you have to toast it for how long you have to temper it at what stage you should remove remove it from the heat at what stage you should cool it down and, and grind it. These are what things, these are the things that makes your food good.
but it's it's all the it's all in the garam masala it's not in me or in xyz chef it's all in the in the spices the spices created by the almighty that's what i think that's that's my belief that's my humble opinion thank you i love you <laughs> uh, this is hunter's beef served chopped and fried and served cold and this is uh, meat which is marinated in brine for 11 days and then steamed and baked and this is this is the we are the only only food service establishment in North America that serves authentic Pakistani pastrami Pakistani pastrami is, is not called, an authentic anything it's called hunter's beef hunter's beef yeah i grew up eating it and i brought it to houston beautiful and beautiful. i want and what are the flavors like just you just need to eat it to to Okay. Tell me what it is, and it is served with. It is served with the magic mustard sauce, one of the, one of the best sauce you'll ever have with, uh, hunter's beef. All right. That's how it's served originally in Pakistan. Pastrami. Uh, yes. Pakistan. Yes. And before Pakistan in India, because the person who migrated from pa from India to Pakistan, he started hunter's beef. Beautiful. That was the Hanifia family who started Hunter's Beef. He migrated from Darjeeling, India to, to Karachi, Pakistan and started this. Beautiful. That had to have been one of the most coolest interviews I've ever done. And honestly, I don't do many interviews like that. But to be able to sit with Kaiser, to be able to hear his story, to be able to go through every single dish and to experience the food the way he looks at it. Absolutely uh, a joy. Remember, um, Anthony Bourdain has come here. He did a, a segment, you know, good old Tony Bourdain. And so now we're here and we're going to go and experience every single item that Kaiser brought out. I will start off with the samosas first because I think it's a very simple to understand dish. Kind of get the, 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 uh, the palate working. Samosas are uh, deep fried they are stuffed with savory uh, proteins. Sometimes it's uh, vegetarian. But I'm gonna dip it into their. Uh, I know it's not basil. I think it's like a cilantro-based cream sauce. All right, first bite. Mm. Oh man. <clears throat> when you usually eat samosas, they are sometimes a little bland. They're not pushing the envelope on flavor because they're it's, it's a snack. It's something that you start the meal off with. This is pushing full front, full force with warm flavors, cumin, um, the, his garam masala, and it's just a great way to start off this meal that seems to be a meal fit for a king. Mm. Oh. <clears throat> the sauce is creamy. It is light. It balances really well with the with, with all of that strong flavors. All right, samosa down. Exceptional way. Again, the 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 the, the, the power right now is starting to dance. Let's go into the Lahore. I didn't say whore. I said Lahore. Uh, chicken. Now the color comes from, uh, I believe, annatto seeds, and it's grilled. The tandoori chicken is grilled in the tandoor. That's where they get the name from. And he says that the chicken is marinated for 96 hours, which means that every single bite should be bursting full of flavor. Let's find out right now. 
Mmm. Mmm. The spice level here, it is in your face. It's not a spicy hot like a habanero, but they use a lot of chili powder. They use um, a big, oh, there's also a smokiness to it. Chicken is good size. The meat just falls right off the bone. And that just takes talent. <clears throat> this is not something that you can do in an air fryer or a microwave. You really need the, the techniques, you need the tools, and you need really good ingredients. And let the ingredients shine. You don't need to do much when the food is that good. Mm. It is just bursting with flavor. Every single bite of that chicken, whether it's the wing or the breast. He stole my drumstick over there, so I'll just eat the wing. But the flavor, it gets down to, to the bone level. And that takes time. Something he said earlier that really um, resonated with me was that you can't rush good Indian food. It needs time. It needs love. That is, that chicken is phenomenal. All right. I can't stop eating chicken. Damn it, it's so good. Just two. Where we go here? That fried chicken has been just looking at me the whole entire time. Now, it's skinless, but he said, I will not miss any of that uh, chewy, fatty goodness. There's no better way of doing this, but just to you know, dig your, 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 your teeth into uh, the drumstick. So here we go. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> My God. Mm. The flavor, the umami. My, my, my taste buds right now are just singing and dancing as if it was a high school musical with Zach Efron. I think that's who's in it. You're right, I don't miss the skin. Mm, the, the chicken is cooked perfectly well. No redness, no dryness. Can I dip it into the, this, this green sauce? This green sauce is so good. Oh. Absolutely amazing. Just the flavors, the symphony of different spices he uses in his, in his masala, his garam masala. Again, everybody has their own garam masala. That's what makes, you know, the, the food the special. Every chef has its own way of tasting and experiencing. What was the best so far? Everything. That's always my answer, right, Marie? Everything. Everything's delicious. All right, fried chicken. That 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 crunch, that coating on the outside. Can you hear it? Oh. And these pieces. I mean, they're huge. You definitely taste clean oil. I think if you want to taste what dirty oil is, go to Jack in the Box at 3 p.m. after they do the lunch rush, and you would just taste this burnt oil. It's just terrible. Okay, let's go into his hunter's beef. I've never seen pastrami um, done in an Indian setting. There are two styles. There's a cold one, a cold, 
a cold and a warm. And then he has this mustard that color-wise, you can tell there's spices. It's a tomato-based um, sauce. Call it a mustard, which is really interesting. Let me show you how good this pastrami is. 11 hours in the brine, and then steamed, and it just falls apart. This is really quality uh, beef. You can smell that smoke. You can smell, oh. Here we go. Oh. I wish, oh, you know what? I wish something. I can make it happen. See you, bud. Um, I love pastrami sandwiches. And there's no bread right now. But there is garlic naan. There is two slices and some tomato. I'm going to make myself a little hunter's beef pastrami naan dipped in this uh, killer mustard. Oh. I can't even describe right now how moist and succulent that pastrami is. And this sauce, it just, it just wraps its arm around you and hugs you and tell you it's gonna be okay. Don't worry if the, if the high school bullies are, 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 are beating you up every day after school. The pastrami says, it's gonna be all right. Mm. Now, mm. that hunter beef, that, that pastrami was cold. Let's try this pastrami that's warm. It's been shredded. It has almost like a jerky-esque feel to it, but it looks moist. Give it a little dip of oh. mm, My God. I really understand why he's my spirit animal now. Flavors, textures, technique, ingredients, driven. You can't open up a cookbook. This is not a 30 minute meal. This is something that you really need to put time into. And to have been around since 2004, to have all the accolades on the wall, to have um, numerous people in the food industry come here, praise what he does. I definitely understand the why. Why does he do what he does? Why does he do what he, he does? And how he didn't, he didn't take any shortcuts. All right, I'm gonna go into the biryani, into the korma, into the green curry, finish off with the steak, and then somehow, some way not explode. This biryani is just light and airy. And, you know, he uses that really high, high quality, premium, long grain basmati rice. Listen, I'm, I, 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 I eat Indian food and I know that the, this is your best, this is your best tool of choice when, when eating good food. Food comes from the soul, from the heart. Mm. Take a really big dollop of this. Oh, it's warm. Oh. I've had biryani at multiple places, but to have his biryani, it just floats into your mouth. It's not, it's not even every, Basmati kernel 
separates itself because of the slow cooking process. The starches don't release, and so you get something that's just it's like a symphony. The, the, these little basmati kernels. Oh. A dip, a bite. Mm. Mm. Well, oh. a lot of people who have eaten uh, Indian food, Pakistani food, some of them say it's too heavy in the cream. It's too heavily spiced. This is really well balanced. You don't see a, a, a load of cream in here. You don't see... Um, I, I go back to the shortcuts that you talked about earlier. There really isn't any shortcuts. He's on the phone. <laughs> He's talking to me right now. There really, any, there really isn't any shortcut. These are the, 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 the patties. And you can see inside, the, inside of it bell pepper. Hmm? Whole bell pepper. Crunch. Texture. And then you, you identify oh, that's not bell pepper, that's chili. Oh, Woo. <laughs> that's a little warm. Identifying what's in the product is really important. Nothing came from a can, nothing came from a box. Mm. This is really nice. It's almost like the consistency of a very well-made meatloaf. But it is it is flavored like nobody's business. Everything here is, is well flavored. Everything here really really goes together well. This sauce is like crack. <clears throat> After eating at Kaiser's restaurant in Malaya, you might have a different understanding of what Middle Eastern, Pakistani, Indian foods can be. Because he doesn't, he doesn't do it in a way where it is traditional. He's taking ingredients that he understands, flavors that he understands, and he's elevating. He's putting them into new homes. That korma has my name all over it. Oh, here we go. This is the chicken korma again. Korma is th uh, it's a curry, but what makes it special is the almonds, the cashews. That's going to bring a different flavor profile. It got really quiet all of a sudden. Either I'm really loud and no one wants to hear me speak anymore. <laughs> I'm looking around now and they're like, yeah. You are a little loud. And I apologize, everybody. Um, so the chicken korma. <clears throat> Four hours. The, the meat is just fall off the bone. It has a creaminess. Oh. That korma is so regal in flavor. It is so royal. There's nothing like what you get at, uh, at, you know, not to compare anything, but there are some fast food uh, Indian joints that take shortcuts. This was made with love. This was made with time. Oh, God. And you know me, I love napkins. So I make a little pile of napkins over here and we're good. Okay. Where do I put it all? In my third leg. Let's go for the steak. Marie, pass me the steak, please. Thank you very much. Pass that back to you. Thank you. Now, he says that his secret, 
he has a secret ingredient. And if you didn't catch it, scroll back, because he will tell you. But uh, the reason why I believe he uses it, because it tenderizes. And when you eat meat, you'll see that the uh, any protein that it has lines. That, that's the um, that's the intermuscular thingies. So you want to cut across the grain so that the that the uh, muscles are shorter, and thus causing a really flavorful piece of meat. Oh. The smoke, the tenderness, the structure of the meat. This is really good steak. Again, the tikka steak. His play on, you know, it, it, it's, I won't say a play on anything. What I will say is this. He takes Indian spices. He takes Indian techniques. And then he grills it as if it's a, a regular USDA American steak. Somebody who didn't grow up in America but has been in America since um, the early 80s. I think he even said 1980 or 81 he came to America to go to the Hilton program to do his, uh, his degree in uh, hospitality. The point of the matter is this. When you take something that's really near and dear to you and you, and you put it with ingredients that are local, you come up with something that is truly special. Oh. And that take a steak. Four good sized pieces of steak for $30. That's like $7.50 a piece. You can't even, you can't get that anywhere else. Quality, Kaiser's always here, the people here are lovely, and you know, everybody's enjoying the food. And that's the most, one of the most important things is that they're off their phones, they're conversating, and they're sharing. All right, everything was exceptional, phenomenal. The steak was a true highlight, the true star. The chicken tikka or the the chicken tandoor was succulent and juicy. The fried chicken mm. didn't miss the skin. Love the crunch. Love the flavor. The the hunter's beef, the uh, Pakistani <clears throat> pastrami. Nothing like it in the market. Nothing ever will be like it in the market. That is something that I would travel across the world for because it truly it truly is special to Himalaya. The basmati rice was beautiful, airy, light. The samosas were full of flavor. The naans were a great vehicle to scoop up everything. And then these patties, what did he call it? He said it reminded him of a sandals. The chicken, uh, the beef patties were phenomenal. Korma was amazing. We didn't even try, try the chicken curry on air. But with a minute left, I'll try it real quick. Ooh. Acidic, uh, flavorful, the depth and complexity of that with the paneer cheese. That in itself is just a, a, a whirlwind of flavors. That might be my favorite dish. Actually, everything's my favorite dish here. I couldn't find anything that really stuck out more than other. If it was for me, the korma was just this flavor explosion that I wasn't ready for and I had never experienced. But everything's amazing. Woo! Guys, thank you so much for sitting through uh, probably 55 minutes of this episode. We got a chance to really dive into the mindset of a chef, a brilliant man. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment below, uh, share this video. But the one thing that you guys can do is go out there support small business, businesses. I'm trying to rush real quickly because I'm down to my last 30 seconds. Thank you so much to Kaiser and Himalaya. Thank you to Marie for bringing me out here. Thank you everybody in Houston for showing me so much love. My name is Calvin Bowie, AKA Captain Charisma. I'm gonna see you here. I'm gonna see you guys here. We're gonna do some sort of pop-up 
or a forehand sitter.